What is mouth cancer? A Mayo Clinic expert explains. What is mouth cancer? A Mayo Clinic expert explains. Learn more about mouth cancer, also called oral cancer, from oncologist Catherine Price, MD. Mouth cancer refers to cancer that develops in any of the parts that make up the mouth, oral cavity. Mouth cancer can occur on the lips, gums, tongue, inner lining of the cheeks, roof of the mouth, floor of the mouth, under the tongue. Cancer that occurs on the inside of the mouth is sometimes called oral cancer or oral cavity cancer. Mouth cancer is one of several types of cancers grouped in a category called head and neck cancers. Mouth cancer and other head and neck cancers are often treated similarly. Products and Services Book, Mayo Clinic Family Health Book, 5th Edition Show more products from Mayo Clinic Symptoms Signs and symptoms of mouth cancer may include A lip or mouth sore that doesn't heal A white or reddish patch on the inside of your mouth Loose teeth A growth or lump inside your mouth Mouth pain Ear pain Difficult or painful swallowing When to see a doctor Make an appointment with your doctor or dentist if you have any persistent signs and symptoms that bother you and last more than two weeks. Your doctor will likely investigate other more common causes for your signs and symptoms first, such as an infection. Mouth cancers form when cells on the lips or in the mouth develop changes, mutations, in their DNA. A cell's DNA contains the instructions that tell a cell what to do. The mutations changes tell the cells to continue growing and dividing when healthy cells would die. The accumulating abnormal mouth cancer cells can form a tumor. With time they may spread inside the mouth and onto other areas of the head and neck or other parts of the body. Mouth cancers most commonly begin in the flat, thin cells, squamous cells, that line your lips and the inside of your mouth. Most oral cancers are squamous cell carcinomas. It's not clear what causes the mutations in squamous cells that lead to mouth cancer. But doctors have identified factors that may increase the risk of mouth cancer. Risk factors Factors that can increase your risk of mouth cancer include Tobacco use of any kind, including cigarettes, cigars, pipes, chewing tobacco, and snuff, among others. Heavy alcohol use. Excessive sun exposure to your lips. A sexually transmitted virus called human papillomavirus, HPV. A weakened immune system. Prevention. There's no proven way to prevent mouth cancer. However, you can reduce your risk of mouth cancer if you stop using tobacco or don't start. If you use tobacco, stop. If you don't use tobacco, don't start. Using tobacco, whether smoked or chewed, exposes the cells in your mouth to dangerous cancer-causing chemicals. Drink alcohol only in moderation, if at all. Chronic excessive alcohol use can irritate the cells in your mouth, making them vulnerable to mouth cancer. If you choose to drink alcohol, do so in moderation. For healthy adults, that means up to one drink a day for women of all ages and men older than age 65, and up to two drinks a day for men age 65 and younger. Avoid excessive sun exposure to your lips. Protect the skin on your lips from the sun by staying in the shade when possible. Wear a broad-brimmed hat that effectively shades your entire face, including your mouth. Apply a sunscreen lip product as part of your routine sun protection regimen. See your dentist regularly. As part of a routine dental exam, ask your dentist to inspect your entire mouth for abnormal areas that may indicate mouth cancer or precancerous changes. Lip cancer occurs on the skin of the lips. Lip cancer can occur anywhere along the upper or lower lip, but is most common on the lower lip. Lip cancer is considered a type of mouth, oral, cancer. Most lip cancers are squamous cell carcinomas, 
which means they begin in the thin, flat cells in the middle and outer layers of the skin called squamous cells. Lip cancer risk factors include excessive sun exposure and tobacco use. You may reduce your risk of lip cancer by protecting your face from the sun with a hat or sunblock and by quitting smoking. Treatment for lip cancer usually involves surgery to remove the cancer. For small lip cancers, surgery may be a minor procedure with minimal impact on your appearance. For larger lip cancers, more extensive surgery may be necessary. Careful planning and reconstruction can preserve your ability to eat and speak normally and also achieve a satisfactory appearance after surgery. Symptoms Signs and symptoms of lip cancer include A flat or slightly raised whitish discoloration of the lip A sore on your lip that won't heal Tingling, pain or numbness of the lips or the skin around the mouth When to see a doctor Make an appointment with your doctor if you have any persistent signs or symptoms that worry you. Causes It's not clear what causes lip cancer. In general, cancer starts when cells develop changes, mutations, in their DNA. A cell's DNA contains the instructions that tell the cell what to do. The changes tell the cell to begin multiplying uncontrollably and to continue living when healthy cells would die. The accumulating cells form a tumor that can invade and destroy normal body tissue. Risk Factors Factors that can increase your risk of lip cancer include Tobacco use of any kind, including cigarettes, cigars, pipes, chewing tobacco, and snuff, among others. Fair skin Excessive sun exposure to your lips A weakened immune system Prevention to reduce your risk of lip cancer, you can Stop using tobacco or don't start If you use tobacco, stop If you don't use tobacco, don't start Using tobacco, whether smoked or chewed, exposes the cells in your lips to dangerous cancer-causing chemicals Avoid the sun during the middle of the day for many people in North America, the sun's rays are strongest between about 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Schedule outdoor activities for other times of the day, even during winter or when the sky is cloudy. Use a broad-spectrum sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30, even on cloudy days. Apply sunscreen generously and reapply every two hours or more often if you're swimming or perspiring. Avoid tanning beds. Tanning beds emit UV rays and can increase your risk of lip cancer. Tobacco and Oral Cancer The use of tobacco products are a major cause of oral cancer. Footnote 1 Key Facts About Tobacco Use and Oral Cancer What is oral cancer? How does tobacco use increase the risk of oral cancer? How does quitting affect the risk of oral cancer? Health Benefits of Quitting Tobacco Use at Any Age For Help to Quit Key Facts About Tobacco Use and Oral Cancer If someone smokes, their risk of oral cancer is about 5 to 10 times greater than someone who has never smoked. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 This risk is multiplied if they also drink alcohol. Footnote 2 Footnote 3 Footnote 4 Oral cancer is 2 to 3 times more common in men than women. Footnote 5 People who smoke have a higher risk of mortality from oral cancer than those who have never smoked. This risk increases with the amount smoked per day. Footnote 1. In 2019, it was estimated there would be 5,300 new cases of oral cancer in Canada, excluding Quebec, and 1,450 deaths from oral cancer. Footnote 6. In Canada, excluding Quebec, 36% of people diagnosed with oral cancer are predicted to die within five years, according to 2015 to 2017 data. Footnote 6. Approximately 40% of new oral cancer cases were due to smoking in 2015. Footnote 7. View health labels for cigarettes and little cigars. What is oral cancer? Oral cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells in the mouth leading to the formation of a tumor. 
Oral cancer can occur on the tongue, lips, cheeks, gums, and the roof, floor, and back of the mouth. In men, most oral cancers occur on the floor of the mouth and tongue. In women, the most common sites are the tongue and gums. Footnote 8 Common symptoms of oral cancer include white and or red lesions, patches or plaques, bony tumors, and open sores. Footnote 9 Treatment for oral cancer often involves surgery and radiation therapy. Surgery involves removal of the affected tissue and may also require removal of part of the jawbone or tongue. Footnote 10 Footnote 11 This could change the appearance of the face and the ability to chew, swallow, and speak. Footnote 10 How does tobacco use increase the risk of oral cancer? Some of the chemicals contained in tobacco smoke and chewing tobacco are carcinogenic, meaning they can cause genetic changes in cells of the mouth cavity leading to the development of oral cancer. Footnote 1 Footnote 12 Tobacco use increases the risk of oral cancer by exposing the mouth to these carcinogenic chemicals, either during inhalation while smoking or through direct contact while chewing tobacco products. Footnote 1 Footnote 12 How does quitting reduce the risk of oral cancer? Quitting tobacco use can reduce the size of precancerous lesions, patches, or plaques in the mouth. Footnote 1. The risk of oral cancer starts to decrease within the first five years of quitting. If someone who smoked has quit for 20 or more years, their risk is the same as someone who has never smoked. Footnote 13. Quitting is one of the best ways to avoid the development of oral cancer and other smoking-related diseases. Footnote 14. If someone who smokes has oral cancer, quitting can still benefit them. Quitting can improve recovery for cancer patients. Footnote 15 Quitting can also decrease the risk of developing a new oral cancer of someone who had one previously treated. Footnote 16 Continuing to smoke after a cancer diagnosis can lower the chances of survival and increase the risk for other cancers caused by smoking, such as lung cancer. Footnote 15 Health Benefits of Quitting Tobacco Use at Any Age Quitting tobacco use reduces the risk of premature death, improves health, and enhances quality of life. Footnote 14 Quitting at any age is beneficial to health. Footnote 14 Even people who have smoked or used tobacco heavily for many years will benefit from it. Footnote 1 Footnote 14 Quitting is the most important thing someone who smokes can do to improve their health. Read more about the benefits of quitting smoking. Tobacco and Bladder Cancer tobacco and bladder cancer. Smoking causes about half of all diagnosed bladder cancers. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Key facts about tobacco use and bladder cancer. What is bladder cancer? How does tobacco use increase the risk of bladder cancer? How does quitting affect the risk of bladder cancer? Health benefits of quitting tobacco use at any age. For help to quit. Key facts about tobacco use and bladder cancer. Someone who smokes is up to six times more likely to develop bladder cancer than someone who does not smoke. Footnote 3 Footnote 4 Footnote 5 The risk of bladder cancer increases with the number of years spent smoking and the number of cigarettes smoked per day. Footnote 6 Footnote 7 in 2022, it was estimated there were 12,500 new cases of bladder cancer in Canada, excluding Quebec, and 2,600 deaths from bladder cancer. Footnote 8. In Canada, excluding Quebec, about 23% of people diagnosed with bladder cancer are predicted to die within five years, according to 2015 to 2017 data. Footnote 9. View health labels for cigarettes and little cigars. What is bladder cancer? The bladder is a hollow sac that stores urine from the kidneys before it is removed by the body through urination. Bladder cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells in the bladder, leading to the formation of a tumor. Over time, the tumor may extend deeper into the bladder lining and invade the muscular layer of the bladder wall. The most common symptom of bladder cancer is blood in the urine. Other symptoms include needing to urinate more often or more urgently, and pain or burning during urination. Tumors caught at an early stage can be treated with surgery or chemotherapy. Advanced cases of bladder cancer may require removal of the bladder. 
In this case, an external drainage bag, urostomy bag, may be needed to help store urine. How does tobacco use increase the risk of bladder cancer? Some of the chemicals in tobacco smoke are carcinogenic, meaning they can cause mutations in cells of the body footnote 10. These chemicals pass into the urine after smoking and remain there for up to 18 hours. This exposure can cause genetic changes in cells of the bladder, which can lead to the development of bladder cancer footnote 11. How does quitting reduce the risk of bladder cancer? When someone stops smoking, their risk of bladder cancer decreases footnote 11. A few years after quitting, their risk of developing bladder cancer drops by about half footnote 12. If someone has quit for 25 years or more, their risk is the same as someone who has never smoked footnote 13. Quitting is one of the best ways to avoid the development of bladder cancer and other smoking-related diseases footnote 11. If someone had bladder cancer, quitting can still benefit them. Quitting smoking can improve recovery for cancer patients. Footnote 14. Continuing to smoke after a cancer diagnosis can lower chances of survival and increase the risk for other cancers caused by smoking such as lung cancer. Footnote 14. Health Benefits of Quitting Tobacco Use at Any Age Quitting tobacco use reduces the risk of premature death, improves health, and enhances quality of life. Footnote 11 Quitting at any age is beneficial to one's health. Footnote 11 Even people who have smoked or used tobacco heavily for many years benefit from it. Footnote 1 Footnote 11 Quitting is the most important thing someone who smokes can do to improve their health. Read more about the benefits of quitting smoking. Tobacco and Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS Tobacco and Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS Tobacco smoke is a major cause of sudden and unexplained death of infants before one year of age, otherwise known as Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS, footnote 1 footnote 2. Key Facts About Tobacco Use and Sudden Infant Death Syndrome What is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome? How does tobacco use increase the risk of Sudden Infant Death Syndrome? How does quitting lower my baby's risk of sudden infant death syndrome? Health benefits of quitting tobacco use at any age. Call for free help to quit. Key facts about tobacco use and sudden infant death syndrome. Infants whose parents smoked during pregnancy and those exposed to secondhand smoke after birth have an increased risk of SIDS footnote 1 footnote 2 footnote 3 footnote 4. The risk of SIDS increases with the number of cigarettes smoked during pregnancy, the number of people smoking in the household, and the proximity of smoking to the infant. Footnote 1 Footnote 3 Footnote 4 Footnote 5 The heightened risk of SIDS related to infant bed sharing is further increased if one or both parents smoke. Footnote 6 Footnote 7 between 2007 and 2011, SIDS accounted for 306, or 19.6%, of all postneonatal deaths, 28 days to 1 year of age. Footnote 8 In 2012, 14% to 16% of SIDS deaths in Canada were caused by smoking. Footnote 9 View health labels for cigarettes and little cigars. What is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome? Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS, is the sudden and unexplained death, during sleep, of an infant younger than one year of age. Footnote 2 Footnote 10 The exact cause of SIDS remains unknown. Since 2012, the reported causes of SIDS deaths are classified as undetermined. This makes it difficult to know how widespread SIDS truly is. How does tobacco use increase the risk of sudden infant death syndrome? Secondhand smoke contains several toxic chemicals that can damage the cells of the body. Footnote 1 Maternal smoking during pregnancy and exposure to secondhand smoke after birth can affect infant brain and lung development. This in turn affects how an infant breathes and may be responsible for SIDS. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Footnote 5 How does quitting reduce my baby's risk of sudden infant death syndrome? People who reduce the number of cigarettes smoked during pregnancy can lower the risk of SIDS for their infants. People who stop smoking can lower the risk even further. Footnote 13, footnote 14, footnote 15. 
preventing exposure to tobacco smoke, before and after birth, and living in a smoke-free environment reduce the risk of SIDS, as well as other smoking-related diseases, such as lower respiratory illnesses, e.g. bronchitis and pneumonia. Footnote 1 Footnote 3 An estimated 14 to 16 percent of all SIDS deaths could be prevented by eliminating secondhand smoke exposure. Footnote 9 Health Benefits of Quitting Tobacco Use at Any Age Quitting tobacco use reduces the risk of premature death, improves health, and enhances quality of life. Footnote 17 Quitting at any age is beneficial to one's health. Footnote 17 Even people who have smoked or used tobacco heavily for many years benefit from it. Footnote 3 Footnote 17 Quitting is the most important thing someone who smokes can do to improve their health. Read more about the benefits of quitting smoking. Toxic Emissions in Tobacco Smoke Tobacco smoke contains over 7,000 chemicals, including more than 70 cancer-causing agents that are released every time a tobacco product is smoked. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Footnote 3 Some of these chemicals occur naturally in tobacco, and others are created through combustion or burning. There are six major toxins in tobacco smoke, tar, nicotine, carbon monoxide, formaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide, and benzene. Toxin means these substances are potentially poisonous for people who use tobacco and people exposed to tobacco smoke. Exposure to these chemicals occurs whenever a tobacco product is burned. Another toxic substance of note is cadmium, also found in older rechargeable batteries, and largely phased out of other consumer goods because of cadmium's toxicity as a known lung carcinogen. Footnote 4. Tar. In tobacco smoke, tar is a sticky, brown residue containing hundreds of chemicals, many of which are known to cause cancer. Footnote 5. Nicotine. Nicotine occurs naturally in tobacco plants and is primarily responsible for causing the addiction to tobacco products. Nicotine interacts with the brain to create pleasurable sensations for the person using tobacco, which reinforces the behavior to use more tobacco. Footnote 6 Nicotine can also harm fetal health and contribute to preterm delivery and stillbirth. Footnote 7 Carbon monoxide Carbon monoxide is in tobacco smoke as a result of burning tobacco. It reduces the ability of your red blood cells to deliver oxygen to tissues, causing damage to the cardiovascular system. Footnote 1 You may be familiar with the potentially fatal effects on people who breathe this colorless, Odorless gas also found in automobile exhaust and released by poorly maintained furnaces. Formaldehyde Formaldehyde is classified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer as a known carcinogen, cancer-causing chemical. Footnote 4 Its health effects can be drastic on people who smoke and those exposed to tobacco smoke. Eye, nose, and throat irritations and other breathing problems are some of the symptoms. Formaldehyde can cause nasopharyngeal cancer, nose, oral cavity, and throat. Footnote 4. Hydrogen cyanide. It is considered one of the most toxic agents found in tobacco smoke. Many short and long term toxic effects of cigarette smoke have been associated with hydrogen cyanide. Long term exposure may cause weakness, tiredness, thyroid problems and an increased risk of miscarriage. Footnote 8 Hydrogen cyanide also damages the natural cleaning system of the lungs, allowing foreign particles and harmful chemicals to build up in the respiratory tract. Footnote 1. Benzene. Benzene is one of the many chemicals present in tobacco smoke. Footnote 9 Footnote 10 Benzene is a toxic compound and known cancer-causing agent to humans. Footnote 3 It is estimated that benzene in cigarette smoke accounts for up to 58% of smoking-induced acute myeloid leukemia deaths, a cancer of the blood. Footnote 11 Cadmium Cadmium is a heavy metal found in cigarette smoke. It causes cancer and can damage the cells lining the blood vessels of the body. High levels of cadmium in the body can contribute to heart disease and lung cancer. Footnote 1 Footnote 4 Health Impacts of Tobacco Use The following diseases or conditions are related to tobacco use. Footnote 7 Footnote 12 Footnote 13 Footnote 14 Cancer of the blood, lung, mouth, throat, kidney 
bladder, cervix, stomach, liver, and bowel. Heart disease, circulatory problems, stroke. Lung disease, including chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Tooth loss, gum disease, vision loss. Type 2 diabetes. Impotence and irregular menstruation or menopause. Sudden infant death syndrome and infant health problems. Premature death. Tobacco and heart disease. Smoking tobacco products causes coronary heart disease, the second leading cause of death in Canada after cancer. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Footnote 3 Key facts about tobacco use and heart disease. What is heart disease? How does tobacco use increase the risk of heart disease? How does quitting affect the risk of heart disease? Health benefits of quitting tobacco use at any age. For help to quit. Key facts about tobacco use and heart disease. The risk of coronary heart disease increases with the number of years smoked and the number of cigarettes smoked per day. Even smoking fewer than five cigarettes per day increases the risk of heart disease. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Footnote 4 Footnote 5 Footnote 6 In 2020, over 53,000 Canadians died from heart disease. Footnote 7 In 2012, heart disease caused by smoking was responsible for 8,561 deaths in Canada. Footnote 8 People who smoke are up to four times more likely to have a sudden cardiac death than someone who does not smoke. Footnote 9 Footnote 10 People exposed to secondhand smoke are also at increased risk of coronary heart disease. Footnote 11 View health labels for cigarettes and little cigars. What is heart disease? Heart disease refers to a number of conditions affecting the structure and function of the heart. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease. It occurs when blood vessels become narrowed or blocked, starving the heart of blood and oxygen. This causes chest pain, referred to as angina, and shortness of breath that could result in a heart attack. Treatment of coronary heart disease attempts to improve blood flow to the heart. Types of treatment include lifestyle changes, such as quitting smoking becoming more physically active, drug treatment, and interventions such as angioplasty or heart surgery. How does tobacco use increase the risk of heart disease? Smoking contributes to the inflammation of blood vessels in the arteries of the heart. In addition, smoking contributes to plaque buildup along the walls of arteries, known as atherosclerosis, causing the arteries to narrow. With time, the plaque can harden. This may cause the vessel to rupture, leading to the formation of blood clots. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 How does quitting tobacco reduce the risk of heart disease? After quitting, the risk of coronary heart disease decreases dramatically. Within 20 minutes, a person's heart rate and blood pressure drops. Within days, circulation improves. After 15 years, the risk of developing coronary heart disease is similar to someone who has never smoked. Footnote 12. Quitting reduces the development of atherosclerosis. The progression of atherosclerosis slows the longer someone who smoked remains smoke-free. Footnote 13. Quitting is one of the best ways to avoid the development of heart disease and other smoking-related diseases. Footnote 13. If someone who smokes has been diagnosed with coronary heart disease, quitting smoking will reduce their risk of negative cardiovascular events, including heart attacks and death. Footnote 13 Footnote 15 Quitting after receiving coronary artery bypass surgery reduces the risk of rehospitalization for heart disease. Footnote 17 Quitting also reduces the risk of dying from coronary heart disease. Tobacco and Lung Cancer Smoking is the main cause of lung cancer, which is the leading cause of cancer death. Footnote 1 Footnote 2 Footnote 3 Footnote 4 Footnote 5 Footnote 6 Footnote 7 Key Facts About Tobacco Use and Lung Cancer What is Lung Cancer? How does tobacco use increase the risk of lung cancer? How does quitting affect the risk of lung cancer? Health Benefits of Quitting Tobacco Use at Any Age For Help to Quit Key facts about tobacco use and lung cancer. 
People who smoke are 25 times more likely to die from lung cancer compared to someone who has never smoked. Footnote 6. This risk increases sharply with the number of cigarettes smoked, the number of years spent smoking, and the age of the person smoking. Footnote 6. Footnote 8. Footnote 9. In 2022, it was estimated there would be 30,000 new cases of lung cancer and 20,700 deaths from lung cancer in Canada excluding Quebec, accounting for 24.3% of deaths due to cancer footnote 10. In Canada, excluding Quebec, only 22% of people diagnosed with lung cancer are predicted to live beyond 5 years, according to 2015 to 2017 data footnote 7. View health labels for cigarettes and little cigars. What is lung cancer? Lung cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells in the lung or airways, leading to the formation of a tumor. Lung cancer symptoms include coughing, chest pain, unexplained weight loss, and spitting up blood or bloody mucus. Treatment for lung cancer can involve a combination of chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery to remove part of or the entire affected lung. Footnote 11. How does tobacco use increase the risk of lung cancer? A number of chemicals in tobacco smoke are carcinogenic, meaning they have the potential to cause cancer in the cells of the lungs or airways and other parts of the body. Footnote 1 Footnote 12 Some of these chemicals damage the normal cleaning process of the lungs to remove foreign and harmful particles. Footnote 13 The result is a buildup of mucus and the development of what is commonly known as smoker's cough an alternative way for the lungs to rid the airways of unwanted substances. Footnote 13. The damage to lung function due to smoking increases the risk of several respiratory diseases. Having a history of lung disease and poorer lung function increases one's risk for cancer. Footnote 14. Footnote 15. Approximately 1 in 15 Canadians will be diagnosed with lung cancer mainly caused by smoking footnote 7 an estimated 72% of lung cancer cases in Canada are caused by smoking footnote 16. Exposure to secondhand smoke in the home can also increase the risk of lung cancer by 20-30% to in people who have never smoked footnote 17. How does quitting reduce the risk of lung cancer? When someone stops smoking, their risk of lung cancer starts to decrease footnote 18 10 to 15 years after quitting, their risk of lung cancer is about half that of someone who continues to smoke footnote 12. The earlier someone quits, the greater the long-term benefit footnote 19 footnote 20. Quitting is one of the best ways to avoid the development of lung cancer and other smoking-related diseases footnote 12. For patients with early-stage lung cancer, quitting can slow the progression of lung cancer and significantly reduces the risk of death. Footnote 21. Continuing to smoke after a cancer diagnosis can also increase the risk for other cancers caused by smoking. Footnote 6.